All right. Now, so long story short, I'm looking at a uh, great British pound, Japanese yen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the what I was talking about was looking at liquidity. And we need to know what is long versus short term. And it's cool because you're really used to looking at higher time frames going lower. And that's actually going to make it a lot easier for you than my other students who've just been here a little longer. Um, they're mm -hmm. so used to getting stuck on lower time frames that they actually never look at the higher ones. And I had to teach them to do the opposite. Like, hey, you might want to check out the four hour chart or an hour chart or a daily chart just to get an idea of if it's like, you know, more liquidity that you can't see on a certain smaller time frame, or if it's like a, a certain structure. <coughs> For example, we talk about fair value gaps a lot and imbalances. Do you see how specifically the one that we just completed was a one hour imbalance? You see what I mean? If I go to a higher or lower time frame, I won't be able to see it exactly this way. That's why switching time frames is good for us and interesting. But it doesn't mean that just because we had a one hour fair value gap there, this big, it doesn't mean that um, it's automatically going to just go down and down and down and down and never continue back upward. You see what I mean? Yeah. So this is what I was going to say. Do you see this one here? And I'll outline it a different color. Put that one in purple. You see this high here? Tuesday high, right? Yeah. Okay. And we also have a Monday, uh, Tuesday low. Okay. And I was saying about like when we participate, it's always around like the same time of the day within my sessions. Do you see how like down here would be like the London kill zone? We talked about it too. This is like the PM session kill zone. Every session has a kill zone, right? Yeah. PM kill zone. Now, I don't really trade the PM very often, so I'm not normally taking these here. I will wait until London. Does that make sense? Hmm. And so a lot of times... Do you see what I mean where... Um, give me one second. Answer a phone call. One sec. Okay. Hello. Right, I'm working. I got to call you back. All right, okay. Now, important part. When we're looking at this Tuesday high and this Tuesday low, yeah. a lot of people feel like, okay, maybe that's liquidity or maybe it's the sell side one that when you get inside this area, they're not sure which one to target, right? From here. Hmm. Does that make sense? Hmm. It might seem like this because this one's closer that this is like likely to get hit, right? Yeah. A lot of people can easily mistake that. Now, what's the interesting part is that when we talk about two things important, verifying highs and lows using time and also understanding uh, certain session functions. So the biggest one that we keep talking about is why London's so important, because that makes the first move of the day every day. Mm -hmm. So if people come and say, OK, as soon as we get to New York, we need to figure out um, what structure was already made. Maybe there's new liquidity. Right. And so yeah. a lot of people will look at the marketplace and say, hey, um, I think that it's possible for me to come in and navigate this 
exact session. And do you see how I always talk about Asia, right? How Asia always gets taken on both sides normally. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. do you see how right when we get to this part of two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> Asia's sell side is taken. And so when I talk about separating your chart and breaking it down into sections, Asia low was taken. It gave a new buy in here that's still open from down here. Even though we have a low here, when we start going up aggressively here, one, two, and three candles in a row, three hours, three hours, and this is already three o'clock in the morning here. So by the time you actually start London session, we're actually closer to this liquidity now, farther from this one. So that's why I talk about all the time, like really coming in at, uh, I'll get down on a lower time frame like this. Coming in and saying, you know what? When we try to actually participate around two to three o'clock, two o'clock is here, and my five o'clock is here. So we know that inside of this area is when we need to start looking to press the button. Whether it's a, a few candles in a row that are consistent. And you can see that Asia was already taken. And I told you guys this as a cardinal rule. Big thing. When major lows are taken, start looking to buy under the bow or just right above it. As soon as it starts to break back upward. Because when London takes this area in the kill zone here it goes mm. down just a little bit and it starts to rise again but asia's high is a prime spot for liquidity as well so when we fail to get lower by three four o'clock and five o'clock the little retracement that we do this is not just going to randomly do you see why this is not just going to randomly go this far down now it's too late in the session. It's already telling yeah. you that this liquidity is, is engineered and that it wants this one first as a short term. This becomes a little longer term. We know that's not the actual draw of liquidity. So I don't want you to even take profits right here. You take parcels. You take a piece of it out. And you leave something in just in case you get all of this. Does that make sense? Yeah, but to know that the market will go that far is enough with the 15 minute chart or will you have like a weekly target? No, remember what we talked about. It's not about the time frame. You can see from the 15, the target is the same no matter what time frame we look at it. It's paired to this is the high of the day. You can go to any time frame and see it. Does that make sense? I can see this from the 15. This is the high of the day. You cannot mistake that. That's why this box is here exactly. Yeah, this exact I, I, high. You feel me? Yes, I understand that 100%. I, I got the, that point that it's not about the time frame, it's about targets. But maybe you have a longer term target. You know what I mean? Like a weekly one. Like you're expecting that the market is not just getting this high of the day, maybe it's getting the high of the week in two days. And then you are thinking, okay, the market going to start to go up now. Or it's just like you look the 15 minute chart and you're thinking, okay, no, it's going to go there. And but this is what I'm saying. So this scenario of what I just showed you did not involve me going to a higher time frame. All I did was start from an hour and go down. I didn't, I don't even know what's on the higher time frame yet. I haven't seen it. All I know is that this liquidity is open from Tuesday. And in this area, we fail to take this low. So that's why everything in here for buying is verified. I can see all the flat spots in here. Regardless of this, what I mean, regardless of the time frame, I can see this here. I'm not going to the weekly chart all the time or daily chart all the time to target something. I'm targeting what I'm saying. It's exactly these. Weak high 
or low, the day high and low in the session. You could see it from any time frame, is my point. Hmm. So the reason why you think that the market will go up there is because at the beginning of London session, the market got the liquidity from the low of Asia. As soon as you get to two o'clock, right? Now, mind you, remember what I said to you also about this here. I'll show you something. There's more than one way to look at it. So like the easier points that I'm giving you, these are all what we call confluences, right? So if you're trying to find direction, find target and verify what direction is now instead of later, these are the things that I'm using to do that. So when I see how the Monday, right? Notice how Monday is only here with a low and I can go to a hour chart. I'll look at it again. Now I'm going to show you something exactly with these here. Monday made a low. I got to change this to a brighter color. Monday made a low. Okay. Now notice how Tuesday failed to get to that low. Now already I'm saying this might be the low of the week. Tuesday normally is the low high of the week. But if we don't get that on Tuesday, it's probably going to be Monday if this is the lowest point by this time. So when I get to this point, I can see, like I said, this is why I like the hour chart. Do you see how the liquidity is easy to see? All these points are just really like popping. They're they're really, really big now. I can see every time it makes a, uh, a low or a high on a certain time, right? Yeah. And so that's why I say like, High the day, low the day, you're going to mark these. Now, I'm not going to mark every one of these, but important ones. Do you see how this is the high of New York? But hmm. look at the structure of it. It's a complete, like, high, just like like that one. You see what I mean? Hmm. So it's all the flat spots. I'm not looking at every single candle's high and low as liquidity. I'm not doing that. That's going to annoy you. And so when I see stuff like this, here again, right? By the time we step here into one and then two o'clock, two o'clock starts going bullish. I know that. And to remind you about midnight, okay? Mm -hmm. When you see midnight, we understand that that's going to be the opening of the new day candle, right? So if we're expecting it to go and have an entirely bullish day, completely one-sided, damn near, if it wants to reverse in the PM session, it could do this. But the bulk of this, when you see how I'm going from the Tuesday and I'm going to show you the Wednesday, okay? Well, actually, I could do three days in a row just to keep it consistent for you. Watch. We talked on this. We're going to do it again. Now, on the hour chart, you see how I can mark out all my liquidity, right? So I think that's what's going to be comfortable for you because you like to, to be able to see things on the higher. So mm -hmm. we talked about how this gap is open and how we traded up into that the first time, right? So when gaps are like this big, it's pro probably likely for it to come back into it. And this is a huge one, right? Compared to like this right here. You see what I mean? This is way mm -hmm. much bigger, right? Yeah. So that means the whole next week, I'm looking for, if we're down underneath it, it's not going to go too far away from this imbalance, first of all. It needs to come back up here. So the Monday move is easy. And why is it easy? It's because we have the, now remember, I said it's not about the higher time frame. It might be from a different time frame that you need something, but it might not hmm. be necessarily, it needs to be the biggest time frame to find the target. This right here is really visual. It's so big that you can't ignore that. That's the first thing you see when you get to this part of the chart. It's huge. Yeah. Now watch this. Now, what I mean about this, and I'm going to change colors here. Perfect. Now, if that was there and we're trying to start trading, remind, remind you, I don't trade Mondays often, but sometimes I do. And if I do, um, I'll actually give you the only way I actually trade a Monday. Ready? Hmm. 
Now, I talked about liquidity so far and what time that I find them important. Notice that the Monday is underneath the Friday completely. But by the time mm. we get there, it's London. It's two o'clock. It's the London kill zone. But inside of a kill zone, underneath the previous day's low, you can't sell that. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. Underneath the low of the day of a previous week, you're also under the previous week's low. So remember what we said. Yeah. What's which ones are the most important? And now I'm showing you on screen why these are the most important. These have the most reaction points. Under the week's low, we're underneath. Uh, I'll be specific. Monday is under the Friday low, right? And we need to be buyers from under the lows. You want to be a seller from above the highs. And what do I mean by that? Let's be specific. So like reminder, right? These mm -hmm. are buy situations, okay? We're underneath the Friday. We're also, let me get this out the way so you can really see what I'm saying, okay? When you watch this video back, you're going to be like, wow, this is incredible. This is really not hard. Wow. Mm -hmm. So watch this. We're going from the hour down to the 15 and then back to Monday. Ready? Now, we talked about how big this fair value gap is and the fact that we weren't there yet uh, on Monday until we start trending upward. So I want to get rid of that visually so you can focus on this now. Remember what I said about midnight and how if the new daily candle is going to open at midnight, this is going to be your 12 o'clock, right? And notice how we go down first. Hmm. So take that liquidity, right? It's going to come down. And the funny part is, if you think that like you don't want to be a, a buyer somewhere in here because you're scared it's going to take the liquidity, don't be. Let it take the liquidity. Then buy it. That's yeah. what you want to do. It's going to make it a lot easier on you because now in your mind, I know what you were saying when we first met. You were like, well, now we have new liquidity. How do I know that this is not just going to come back down and take this one too? Yeah, no, I understand, yeah. Now, you took week. a major. You took the major in terms of time and uh, something from liquidity that we can use. So we took a, let's write it out on the screen so we can really be clear. We took a session low. So Asia was already taken out, mostly. Hmm. Or at least like the black part. I kind of can see it like this, right? So Asia kind of starts here. And we took the low of that, right? Hmm. And then this is London kill zone. So this is already two o'clock. So I consider that London. So we have session low, Asia low taken. We have a day low taken. So basically you're explaining me now uh, turtle soup in, in London. In London, yes. Now, when you get to this area, right, you can wake up in New York and see all of this. Now, the whole time, mind you, you're like, hey, sometimes you get it a little differently because some days it'll, it's going to look easier and some days it's going to look like you have evidence of both sides and you have to wait for one side to be shown to you a certain way. But what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, do you see how in this area it's consolidating? It looks kind of confusing, right? We don't know which side it wants to kind of break down. And again, mm -hmm. if you're above Asia... This might be kind of confusing because you might think that it only wants the Asia to then come back down. Does that make sense? High percent. And yes, you're taking the high of London as well there, you know? Right. It takes the yeah. high of London. Right, right. So this could be easily uh, mistaken. I'm glad that you said that because now we're talking about how to navigate what's what right now. So this is why we talk about breaking ideas like in your trade plan mm -hmm. into main ideas. Remember what I said about London's function. It can easily be the what? The lower the high. Low the day or the session, right? And then if it's the low of the day, I'll say it like this. That means I'm looking for this to be in place between London and New York AM. If PM session by itself wants to come and take it, then that's fine. That's totally acceptable.
But we just want to see that between London and New York AM, that this is going to be here, and then this is going to be exactly how it's on my screen now. It's going to be a little, you know, bumpy road for a second, and it's going to take this out, and a lot of people are going to try and sell this here. But the problem is, it doesn't even take the liquidity down here. It actually just stops and goes higher. Stops, fair value gap now, goes higher, right? Hmm. This is now, we know that this is like acceptable for us and we can actually uh, anticipate this all from the low of the day. And on top of that, watch this. Mind you, what did we talk about? We talked about the gap, didn't we? So we know that this yeah. gap has to be traded back into somehow. You know what I mean? And the Monday doesn't mm -hmm. stop until what? So you're not going to sell this down because the gap is here. You see what I mean? Yeah. And you have all these things that uh, you're taking into account for why you can buy this down here and why you think that you can get to a certain area too. So you have both in place. Hey, I can buy this down here. This is not sell side. And you're going to systematically go with target. So this will be a target one. Now, you want to know what's funny is when you do it systematically like this, this will be your first target. You're going to look to your left and see all this here. And let's zoom in on this. Watch. Mm -hmm. Instead of you be confused about it now, all this to you now looks like, whoa, this looks like just really, really good liquidity now on the way to your imbalance that you already thought was going to get there. So every time that you get to these areas, you know that in here now, you have a logical reason as to why this should not retrace even though you're above Asia. That's why, you remember, well, I talked on this before. It's about being able to select the direction and stay with it and avoid things that aren't a part of what you're doing right now. So that means if this is bullish from down here, you have a target here, you have targets all in here, You have a target right above that, and you have the gap that you didn't get back to yet. That's crazy. So all of this, you can you have to ignore the sell side. Every time it comes down, you're not going to get confused and think it's going to be a massive retracement, and you're not going to think that this is going to go very far. This is not for you to sell to make money. None of this is. All this is, if you are in from down here, just hold it <clears> until you get to a logical <throat> area. If you want to add more to your position when you get to New York, you can. How do you do that? You can either go to a smaller time frame or a bigger time frame and find a fair value gap or find an order block or something. And this is what I'm saying. Say you can find this fair value gap. And it's a really big one too. And hmm. you know it's not going to go down like that because you still have a, a, a logical area that you're trying to get to. So... Every time you see something like this, look, back down again. You're yeah, going to look at I, this as the draw of liquidity now. I understand the, the point, okay? I know that we not get the low of London. However, I, I would expect to get the, the, the lows that are you said, uh, used before New York. So I uh, where? Like, the, those lows in, in London. The equal lows. Here? That. Yeah. Oh, oh, so this is what I mean. Ready? Watch this. Now, I'm glad you brought that up. Now, this is a tough spot for a lot of people because remember what we, 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 we're going to troubleshoot this. Ready? And then we're going to clean it up and fix it up. Watch this. We would have been confused only for a little bit here. Um, I see a lot of traders. They think that it's the turtle soup to go down. This is all the evidence of it. Maybe it wants to reverse from here. This is what we'd be thinking about. Okay. Let's do it in order. So I want to try and keep all this stuff here. And so let's go over here and narrate. So in that area, it looked like a turtle to go down. It also was New York above London and Asia inside uh, like the 8 to 11 which can easily give reversals, right? 
Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. So <laughs> that right there, like you said, this would easily be like a uh, a situation where people look at it like this. And we think that this might be the turtle down. Now, really quick, I want you to notice something. Now, all these lows here, these are great uh, looking for liquidity. But the problem mm -hmm. is, right, if we're so bullish, it's going to really be respectful of um, the upside on all time frames until you get to that gap. But what's funny is when you actually break this down, right? Remember what I said before about verifying things by time? Watch this. When you get to this area, go and mark out your 8 to 11. Once you mark it out, okay, you only have but so much time for those London lows to get taken. So what do I mean by that? When you get to this area here, and let's say you start to see how price is um, consolidating here, okay? This looks kind of bad, and it drops down. Now, the first time, mm. now, I'll do it like this. Watch. The first time, and I'll be honest, you do have a fair value gap here on the five minute. Now, you see how we couldn't see that on the 15? Mm. That's really important. Got to be able to see what's right uh, in the way of the liquidity. So if it doesn't want the liquidity, it's going to go to a gap. And we're going to mark out the London lows. Okay. Now, the mm. funny part is when we get above here, even I would have been like, hey, I think this might want to come down because it looks kind of bearish here. Like very bearish, actually. Looks very bearish here. Mm. But the problem is, ready? We're talking mm. about the 8 to 11. Notice the time these are happening. It's not just about structure, but remember, I said this before, that a lot of people actually, when they study ICT, they don't take this seriously that we do time first and then price second. It's not price and time. That's why we do, hey, well, what time did the low come in? Notice that this is 9 o'clock in the morning, or 9 o'clock in the morning. Distribution starts at that time. And then we also have another low here at 10.35 to 10.40. Now, I want you to write this down for your notes, okay? This is yeah. also important, ready? If we can't get to a certain liquidity target by a certain time, it will not get there and be ignored. So that means between 8 and 11, the reason why we also call it kill zone is because it verifies direction as well. So like when you see it down here at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10.30, 10.40, this is 10.40 and this is ultimately going into 11 o'clock. <laughs> by 11 o'clock if it fails to touch these lows down here it's not going to do it it's going to just continue it doesn't mm. want this as a draw of liquidity so remember what I said mm. before about the same thing with those London lows of you know it's easier to see it when the session starts at London function like the London low of the day or high of the day but when you get to New York it doesn't have to like really take everything. Notice how we're in that fair value gap I just marked. But the only thing that is taken in liquidity is this low here. You see that? Yeah. So instead of it wanting that London low that we were all probably looking for, it only wanted a little bit of sell side to then make the next move. It doesn't have to take the whole thing out. It failed to get down here by 11 o'clock, it's not going to get down here. It's verifying that the direction is still bullish, and all it wanted to do, if we had to narrate why it did a down and up, it made more liquidity so that it could go higher. 
and it needed to only take just a little bit of sell side on the way. It's not going to take everything because this is bullish. When it's bullish, it's going to respect bullish PD arrays. Bullish PD arrays. Fair value gap. Fair value gap. Okay, so when, when for example, London uh, take the lows okay, of Asia or the day before or the week before, mm -hmm. and we have a target in the upper side that we didn't get yet in London, New York will go up, most likely. We can be yes. confident enough to look in longs. Um, that's a perfect way to put it. If there's other targets still there, yes. New York is going to come and grab some more of that liquidity. And notice how this one, again, we have that target still there. London obviously couldn't get there all the way. So New York had to come in with AM and PM, even inside of Asia, to get there. Now, the gap is up here, and we make it there. But watch this, too. Mm. The whole time, mind you, I've been talking about, like, organizing your liquidity. But you also have things that you can do. Remember, we talked about that um, imbalance being the real main idea that we want to trade towards that. So that's what gave us the bias, number one, to stick to that side. No matter how many times we see it come down, we're, we know that we're trying to trade back up. So mind you, watch this. Notice what we talked about with um, New York every day and midnight. You want to be, if you're in London here, you want to be a buyer underneath midnight and you're able to do that here. You can easily find yourself in a trade, no problem, and hold it. And where's your liquidity? Previous day. See that? That yeah. would have been a clean target. I could see it on the five minute. Now I go back to the hour and look at it again. You see that? I could see that same target from anywhere. But that's just on you to understand that, hey, you know what? I have to stay bullish. I can't come in and change my bias just because I have a couple candles downside. You might have one mm. day down and you sell it down. You know why? Because the same thing we just looked at on the, the for the buying. Yeah. What happened above midnight when you got to London? You were yeah, London above, didn't keep going up. You were about you were above midnight already. Mm. So when you look at that. We know that right now, right here, is going to be a day of selling, or at least in London. And when you get to New York, right, to finish the idea, notice how London is not going to be just, just randomly reversed. You can take your new trade here. Does that make sense? Why? Fair value gap, number one. And the time is good. So, 8 o'clock. And remember, this is the next part of the day where we're all allowed to press the button to get in so 8 to 11 I could do it like this wow fair value gap aligns right in time how do we know it's not going to get this gap it's too late in the day 9 30 9 45 9 50 see how far this is from up here it's not going to fill that in right away why Time is verifying this. And look at the direction the, the, the further it goes in time. But if it has trouble getting up here by 11 o'clock, it's not going to get up here. It's the same thing I just said. Notice where we but are about 11. Uh huh. You, you will want to get that uh, movement low and start at the beginning of New York when that lap, last up candle in New York happened. Yes, around there. Yeah. And yeah. What will tell you? Um, I, I mean, I understand that it's a good place to sell because the PDA rate and everything, but what makes you confident that we'll not go to the second fair value gap? It's what I just said. It's time. So when we see how, notice the time of where these candles are. We go up here. This is 9 o'clock in the morning. And remember, you only have till about 11 o'clock to verify a direction for, uh, for New York. So if it has trouble, Getting this high above here at 9, 10. Okay, it's the confluence between the PDA rate and the time is actually 9 o'clock. That is when the market reacts. It's not just because this one example is 9 o'clock. 
It's this whole window here. So if you fail to get up here, when you get to this window of time, it might be going up here and you're watching it. You're saying, okay, I see a fair value gap here. I see a fair value gap here. I want to know if I need to sell it from this one or this one. By the time you see how market starts to react here, you're yeah. using the fair value gap because you know it's going to react off either this one or this one. But when this one starts to go down and you're going to obviously try to be in sales before this candle at 930. Mm. But when this one starts to react from the fair value gap already, and if you watch the entry hacks video, that will give you a clear entry hack to get in from the blue candle to the white one. Now watch. Now you need a lower time frame because you're on the 15. Watch this. Notice how this is 905. 9.10, 9.15, now 9.25, and into 9.30. Going into 9.20 to 9.30, completely bearish, and we know it's coming from a bearish fair value gap, and there's liquidity underneath us. Now, when we see how it's down here at 9.35, and it will literally not stop, you might not have been able to see this exact candle or get this candle, but... This is not going to randomly just reverse to that second for value gap now. It's not. It's too late in the mm. day. Because look at this. Yeah. 940, 10 o'clock. 1020. It's so close to 11 o'clock now that I do not believe that it needs to come up to take these higher objectives. Remember what we talked about with um, how daily candles form. They need to mm. form a certain way. The same way a one minute candle has 60 seconds to form the entire candle. That's why this idea works. A daily candle is from 12 to 12, isn't it? And you will sell in New York because you have a target in the lower side of the chart. Or yes. it's just enough. You'll, you'll still have London. a lower target. You'll still have a lower target somewhere. Okay. Liquidity is somewhere. Yeah. But what I'm saying is if this is like open 12 o'clock, this is normally London high of the day. This range expansion part is the upper part of your bearish candle on the entire day. So if you go to a daily chart, I guarantee you it's going to be a big sell side candle. And in New York, yes, we're going to still be able to sell it again. It's not just going to randomly reverse a bearish candle. It's going to expand. When you get to New York open, it's going to be right about here. It's going to go up for mm. a second again. And then go 10 times lower. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's that why it looks this way. So from the top of this right here, this is basically what I just drew. So when you see open is the body part here, the flat part of the white. This mm -hmm. is London's high. See midnight London's high. You start to come down. When you start to come down, this is you understanding a daily chart better. Mm. This is what the London high looks like as it's coming down. Right? Now it's going mm. to be like this. I'm like right here. Okay? Now this starts to come down. Now maybe it comes down to like here. That would be here for us. You know what I mean? It's already mm. created a leg down. All it's going to do is give a small retracement back up to then go even lower. Now, it makes the bottom part of your body, this is the bot this is the whole body right here. Now, mm. why does it go bullish at the end of the day? You got the target. And it's doing the week. Thank you. It made it to some liquidity somewhere. Or it's going to generate its own. Think about that also. That's why you also see like price goes up, down, up, down. But this is not for a retracement. Hmm. It's only What's to give you liquidity. Did. It's just giving That's you cool. new liquidity. So then when you see that taken, you're like, oh, I can collapse my trade now. Okay, I'm done. Hmm. Because you know that the only thing you have left in that daily candle is for it to go like this. And close. Yeah. And look at that. Right from there, it goes sideways. Because it's the close. It's going to do that until 
what? Roughly 12 o'clock. You know what I mean? Hmm. And your 12 o'clock starts there. That's it. That's how... This is the, the breaking down of a complete day. New, London High, New York continuation type of day. You see what I mean? London Low, <laughs> New York continuation, and you close. You get a high here. Now, the highs in here, this is actually a, a high, a, a run above midnight, but you can only see this on the one minute. That's why I tell you it's not just about time frame because you can see this here. And then see this here above the midnight and sell it down. And it's no different. Now, this goes sideways because you have an objective for the next day. This is a news day today. That's why this day was like this. Does this make sense? All this is going to be consolidated when it's waiting on non-farm payroll, NFP, to make yeah. this move right here. See what I mean? So when there are big news next day, usually it could be a consolidation day. Um, it's gonna get, it's gonna offer you more than one move per day on a before mm -hmm. news. It's not gonna be like a one entry and hold type day how the Wednesday was. Okay. And what's interesting is I called this entire move last night. Called this entire move. Yeah. And why did I buy it? I was in here, okay? Underneath midnight. I saw this here. And like I said, I told you my routine. I don't trade outside of my routine. Hmm. That means, even if I can see this here, I'm not getting in early at 1220. I'm not getting in early at 1255. I'm not getting in early at 145. I'm not doing that. What time am I taking the trade? Two to five, right? I'm waiting till two at least. And that's me getting in early. I really want to wait till three for a special reason. And I'll, I'll make sure you can see it again. Now, I want to highlight the two to five. Distribution start, yeah? <clears throat> yeah. That's my guy. You're right. So us being on a five-minute chart, we can see. Look at that. So now that's why I say you can wait for two because... You're actually on the end of a manipulation cycle. Mm. But you have to be understanding of what the manipulation is going to do. That's why you wait. If you get in too early on manipulation, bro, you get yeah, manipulated. Look. You get literally manipulated. It goes up, down, up, down. Look at how bad that is before the move. Mm. That's real manipulation. You know what I mean? Yeah. When it does this shit right here, that's manipulation. And remember what I said before. You see how manipulation's upward and so is distribution? They can go the same way. It's not just, I know the ICT is confusing. He makes everybody think that AMD is, you know, the A is sideways. Makes you think the M has to go down for D to go up. That's not true. It can do that. It's not forced to only do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, could you get at the end, for example, of um, manipulation, if you saw that there was a very obvious manipulation and liquidity taken? What do you mean? Like, for example, suppose that in this same um, manipulation process in London, uh -huh. we'll get the, the lowest low. Mm hmm before to move up uh, so you see that this i mean you know or, or even even the next one even the 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 the, 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 the equal lows there and it's, it's very obvious you know because you know that the market should go up could you get there or there is still too much risk this is actually really perfect because it's the same thing we're talking about on turtle soup but you're doing it in a fractal way. So this is another style of turtle that you're going to learn about. It's called the AMD turtle. And so when manipulation, which is Q2, takes out Q1, 
to the downside first, it causes it to do a turtle suit, which is no different from Monday under Friday or yeah. Monday, you know, uh, one week under one, uh, the, uh, the w- current week underneath our previous weeks for then buys. Does that mm. make sense? So if I'm looking yeah. at it like this, Q1 or London Q1, 90 minute cycle style, this is nothing but liquidity. It's similar to just being Asia by itself. You know what I mean? It's fractal. Yeah. So yeah. when Q2 rushes down when it opens and takes out Q1, turtles like this, oh my God, you got to buy that. You are going to yeah. make a lot of money. And when you get to distribution, this is not going to stop. This is going to verify your direction for you again. London makes the move. And what's wide open? liquidity right Hmm. so I took the trade in here and I went to sleep and (laughs) what happened when I woke up at my target I don't have to stare at the computer every time I trade bro I don't want you to have to do the same thing either yeah just pull the trade and yeah you 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 pull the trigger you have an understanding of what you're going to do now, I'll say it like this. I didn't trade. I traded NASDAQ for the news. I didn't stay for GJ on the news. I probably should have. This actually would have mm. been really easy. I'm not going to lie. Now, watch this. This is why I should have held. And I looked at this right, right when I woke up. You know what's funny? Um, watch this. Yeah, I, I, would have, <clears throat> I would have stayed longer. Um, I don't want to be rude, but I have to go to work uh, very soon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, last example. Ready? The last reason why I should have held this is because of this. You see? Yeah, that was a target. That was a good internal liquidity target. So this wasn't yeah. hit, handled before. I got out around here, and then I was good with that around here, actually. And so 193.040. But, you know, I should have held it. But yeah, good session, bro. I'm glad that was a good, 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 good uh, understanding, I think, that you got from how we broke this down. Yep. Oh yeah, I I I got I got the point hundred percent. I'm getting more confident with this now. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Good man. Thank you very much. No problem, man. I'll see you on Monday. See you Monday. Good All win. Right. Ciao ciao. Cool. That's my guy right there.